Alright, so this is episode 3 of trying to make a clothing factory in the new Mechanoids expansion playing on 500% threat scale, which is proving more difficult than I originally anticipated. The new mechanic Total War I believe only applies to Mechanoids as we end up getting a massive raid because our wealth kind of skyrockets in this episode. I do figure out a way to fix our wealth problem at the end of this episode though, so yeah, stay tuned for that. One final note is, I don't know what was wrong with me while I was recording, but there's a little bit of cringe in like the first minute 30 seconds. I don't know, I was just in a weird mood, so just take it with a grain of salt. Alright, so first off, we're going to build a wall and this is going to accomplish multiple things. It's going to help our defenses and we can funnel all the raiders into a choke point. And once we get this construction up to eight, we can build hoppers on our textile recycler and we can start recycling all this tainted gear we have lying around. It's looking like building these walls is not going to get us there, but it got us quite a ways. After completing a wall that even Joe would be proud of and we built a bed, dresser, and end table in our room, that's going to get us almost up to eight construction. To get to eight, we can set up some spike traps in our choke point so that raiders will walk over there. Them and we can use them as kind of a emergency defense. Before we do though, we have a serious wild man problem that we have to deal with. They've been eating all of our agave fruit. And this is where the video is unfortunately going to get a little bit serious. Recently, a team of Rimworld moderators have gotten together and they've proved my Rimworld speedrun is impossible. As in the last episode, we had two raids back to back that went wrong for the raiders. On top of this, in both back to back raids, they had the same sometimes raids go wrong events where it seemed about half of them turned into wild men. Now, I'm not that good at math and I know none of you guys are, but I I hired an expert statistician who's got a PhD in sucking while drawing me some fan art that I'm not sure is TOS friendly, she explained that the odds of getting those two events back to back were 1 in 400 for anyone who cares. Okay, look, if you didn't find any of that funny, just cut me some slack, okay? I'm trying to connect with the Zoomers and grow my channel. All cringy humor aside, we begin the process of arresting all these wild men on our map as we want Doomguy to level up his construction skill making spike traps. And I'm worried that if we leave these wild men to just wander around, they're going to hit our spike traps and make them useless. We get pretty unlucky with these guys. There's a 50% chance that we can arrest them peacefully, but all of them in Rage. It doesn't really matter too much though because Hoshi and Flingabob are wearing riot armor which is really good against fist attacks. It's not that good against sharp attacks and Barris ends up pulling out a kitchen knife and thankfully does not end up doing any serious damage with it. About an hour later and a few of the prisoners were still bleeding we end up getting raided and here we go we're getting sieged again by the mecha droid faction by only four mecha droids. So two things I've noticed about the mecha droids. One is that they siege pretty often. Second mecha droids are naturally really strong and deep is actually extremely strong. He's tough as well. On top of the fact that he, like the other three mecha droids that are sieging us, are all Delta series mecha droids, which get extra HP on their body parts and have 40% built-in armor. I have also noticed with these Delta series mecha droids is their combat stats are always usually really good. Like they all have around 10 to 15 in shooting and melee. And yeah, these guys are all really good. It'd be nice to knock one of them out. Okay, these guys are assaulting us, which is odd. They just got delivered their siege materials, like this 451 steel, these 14 components, these shells, and a bunch of meals, which I don't know why they got meals. I don't think mechs need to eat. They consume electricity for sustenance, not food. But yeah, right when they got delivered this stuff, they decided just to attack us. I think the AI there is a little bit messed up, because we're not attacking them yet. We just sent out Doomguy, and we're having him take cover behind this wall and very nice kill on Hardened. We completely destroyed his thorax and shattered his reactor as well. I would like it if Doomguy does not kill these guys and we can maybe capture them. And okay, we got our Arkhamut out here just kind of tanking. It has a shield of 200 HP. Oh, wait, did we just kill another one? Okay, we killed deep. I don't want to kill these guys, but I also don't want them to do any damage to anyone. So, I mean, I guess I'm okay with this. And... Okay, the Arkhamut has tanked a few shots, but its shield is not even down yet, which is good. And let's have Doomguy just pursue these guys. We're going to use Shift Run, as people are telling me to do. I don't do it all the time because there's some times where you have to stay outside of their radius and you don't know exactly, like right now, we're kind of heading into their radius. Also, by the way, if we do move while we're shooting, we do lose some accuracy. We hit Juicy, we shot off his right arm, but that's not going to slow his movements. Let's see, I think he's probably going to get away. We're getting really close to the edge here. Cynical got away. Can we hit Juicy? Like, I don't know, on one of the legs or something? We hit him, shot off his right leg. That's good. Okay, we just need to do one more shot here on his other leg, maybe. 
Uh, no, he got away. All right, well, that was a really good raid. They ended up bringing us a lot of materials like components and steel, some meals, and we can butcher up their bodies as well for quite a bit of stuff, actually. Oh, and Exorus is actually butchering up one at the butchering table, which gave us... Was that seven advanced components? Did we get all those seven advanced components from just that one guy? I wonder if it's based off a of cooking skill. Let's have him try that again on this other one because you can butcher these guys up at the machining table as well, but I don't remember getting seven advanced components from these guys last time. And yeah, that time we got eight advanced components. I think that's the max you can get. We got a bunch of mechanoid parts and some charged mechanoid power cells. Exorus does have eight cooking, so he gets more stuff, I think, from butchering stuff up. But yeah, those mecha droids are a really good way to get advanced components. Oh, and cool. We got some full... This is actually... Wait, this is amazing because we do have a psychic animal tamer for these thrombos that we got in episode one. And this was the event that our storyteller gave us after giving us a raid. He sent in three thrombos, which is a lot. I think that's because of our threat scale. Because, yeah, we're only on day 16. Our wealth isn't even that high either. I don't think any of these events are based on wealth. I'm not exactly sure, though. Like, with the total war mechanic, I didn't think events were based off of wealth. But, yeah, we got three thrombos in here. And we're going to choose the best one to use our psychic animal Tamer on like definitely not this one it's only got 74% of the normal health we want one with a decent amount of health and probably like a decent amount of speed and damage like this one actually has a decent amount of health 108% a really high amount of damage and a decent amount of speed how about this one oh yeah it's way better than this one let's definitely get this female all right we're gonna activate the psychic animal tamer on this one in the front let's just make sure it's the one we want yeah it's the one that's got the decent amount of health damage and speed and let's see if it gets brain damage here I don't think it did? No, it didn't get any brain damage. Nice. Even if it did get brain damage, it only does like a couple damage to the brain and Thrombo's brains have huge amount of HP. One thing I also noticed, by the way, is this is a female and there is a male here. There's two females, one male. If we could get another psychic animal tamer to tame up this other male, we could breed them. So we sent out Flingabob with some goods on a caravan and we're going to head south. We already know that Jahan does not have a psychic animal tamer from what I remember. They might have got new goods though. But yeah, these guys still have the combat AI and it's now 5,700 to pick that thing up. In the last episode, I think it was only like 4,700 because we had that trade inspiration. All right, we kept them moving along towards Lenendale and these guys have a good amount of silver. We're going to sell off Zachariah, which is one of the wild men. This dude's overall not bad. Like he's got six shooting, 15 intellectual. He can't get any higher than that though because it's locked. But yeah, we're still going to sell him off for 1k. These guys do have a psychic animal pulser, not a psychic animal tamer, unfortunately. So yeah, we can't get that. Let's see if we could even afford one if we sold off all of our goods, like all these mechanoid power cells these mechanoid parts and these advanced components oh yeah that's 3700 silver right there we're now gonna have flingabob head south to pumpville and we're gonna really hope these guys have the animal tamer if not then we're gonna have to go i don't know up north here maybe there is an abandoned broadcasting station up here which is part of a random quest we got and it's next to this settler faction and they could have one i think there's also a fox girl faction over here that might have one the rest of these guys are hostile though there's also roulette wick over here to the east they could have one and I think that's pretty much it. All right, I made it down to Plumpville and no, they don't have it. They do have some pretty nice stuff like this crypto shield, which offers really good protection for the neck, torso, arms, and hands against mainly gunshots, but it really does nothing for like blunt attacks. If we pick that up and I would also like to get a psychic shock lance, this thing's really good situationally. That's going to cost us 2k silver. I think we're still going to have enough for a psychic animal tamer, assuming that we can pick one up over at, I'm thinking we're going to go to to roulette wick and then there's a citadel up here we can trade with and we can also stop by this thrumkin colony on the way there we're going to swing right by home and we are actually ready to set up this textile recycler because doom guy did finally get his eight construction so we're gonna have doom guy build these hoppers and whoa they take a lot of work this is going to take forever all right well we were unable to build a factory hopper before fling bob could make it up here so we sent out wonkus with some extra goods that we had just kind of lying around wonkus met up with fling bob and wonkus is still a little bit injured so he's slowing our care been down by like three tiles per day which is not that much we're moving at 53 almost we're gonna have these guys head over here together though and wonkus is gonna go check out this thrumkin colony while flingabob heads up here to roulette wick and astio citadel and all right they made it over there we split them up and these thrumkins do not have much just a psychic sooth pulser all right well wonkus is just gonna head home and flingabob's gonna head over to roulette wick and osteo citadel and we're really gonna hope that they got what we need and the 
magic moment. They do not, unfortunately. They do have a hardened recon power armor, though, which increases movement speed by quite a bit and global work speed. And since it's hardened, it gets more sharp protection. That would be something that's really nice for Doom Guy. We got some more advanced components that were lying around, some more mechanoid parts, and then some human meat. And we have a bunch of human leather, too. That's going to be 1300, and yeah, that's going to be enough for that power armor. All right, we made it to the Citadel, and oh, they have a psychic pacifier, but not a psychic animal tamer. Ordinarily, I'd way rather have a psychic pacifier because you can use that to recruit a colonist. I think we will pick up the psychic pacifier anyways, and we're going to swing on home and grab a bunch of human leather. All right, well, I got some good news and bad news. Good news is we got our textile recycler up and running. Doom guys making the final hopper. Bad news is the thrombos ended up leaving. I thought they were going to be here for longer. I guess they were here for three days and they left, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to at least kill them for their mass amount of meat and leather. And okay, we're actually getting raided by... Okay, this is actually some more good news. They're a bunch of Vikings by the look of it. There is a lot of them though. All right, well here the raiders come. There's a couple really decent shore range weapons that were out here in front of our base. So we had Doom Guy go grab these and due to the sheer magnitude of just how many people there are here, I think we will be using short range weapons on these guys. Like we do have a revolver right now. And okay, we only got like one shot off. Now we're just going to pull out the short range weapons. We're going to put people in defensive positions and we're going to send our animals over here. Holy crap, they're coming in fast. And yeah, our dragon, the thing about this thing is it's really big. So it's really easy to hit. And oh yeah, Doom Guy's loving this. We're getting so many kills and his mood is just going up. He's not getting hurt, by the way, at all, really. Okay, he finally got hit. The dragon is knocked out. It's actually going to bleed out in three hours. And then how's our dog doing? It's doing really good, actually. It's not even in immediate danger. And Hoshi, yeah, this is not the place for you to be right now. So you got to get out of here. Doom guy, maybe pull back a little bit. We killed another one. We're probably not going to have to kill that many more, and they're going to run. I'm so pretty sure. How's Bundy doing? Oh, he's bleeding pretty bad. Oh, and there we go. They're going to run. Very nice. I don't think we even pursue. And meanwhile over here, it looks like Wonkus is going to be able to save the dragon. It's got three hours left. Now it's got six. And now it's got eight. Yeah, we're good. What the heck? We just got more thrombos. What is the chance of getting thrombos? Oh, and then we got gut worms right after. So they give us a positive and then they give us a negative. But yeah, earlier I was talking about those one in 400 odds. What are the chances that we get more thrombos though? Like, I don't know the mechanics of the storyteller. Maybe thrombos aren't that rare of a thing. So we got, I think at least another day and a half before the thrombos leave. And we built a comms console so we can now see the traders that we're going to be getting every day. They're orbital traders and this one's an exotic goods trader. In order to see what they have, we need to finish building this orbital trade beacon. And I had a deconstructor here in one of our stools to be able to make it because yeah we're really low on steel right now and then we also got to power it as well all right now we're going to call this exotic goods trader and they might actually oh i see a psychic animal i think it's two psychic animal pulsers yeah it is no that's the one trader i think that would have had the item too that's really unfortunate I mean, they do have a lot of nice stuff. It's just, they don't have what we're looking for. Meanwhile, on the map, we got two caravans going. Flingabob is heading up to this Fox Girl faction. He's almost there. And then we got Doom Guy heading out. And we're going to have him actually just settle a new base to the east over here a bit. And we're going to hope that inside this map, there is an ancient tome. And we can maybe find another psychic animal tamer inside the tome. Is there a tome in here? There is one in the northwest corner of the map. Very nice. And all right, we're going to open this baby up. We are on a caravan okay there's unfortunately no animal tamer here there are two mechs that are hostile though doom guy needs to run we had him set up a caravan okay that was really lucky that that did not hit oh and then that was actually even luckier that that hit did not do any permanent damage this goliath has an inferno cannon or something a needle gun actually things got a lot of range i think we're gonna be able to just kite these mechs they don't seem like they're able to catch up to Doom Guy. Meanwhile, our caravan made it over. Oh, it's here, the Psychic Animal Tamer. Okay, we're gonna pick it up and we actually have enough silver. The Fox Girls came through clutch. We're now gonna head home and it's gonna take one day to get home though is the only thing. I'm really not sure if we're gonna be able to make it in time. So Doom Guy's anti-material rifle has way longer range than the Lancer's charge lance. So he was able to just kite it and eventually he finished it off. The Goliath is a different story though. It moves really slow and we did tag it. So it's moving even slower, which allowed doom guy to grab all the goods from the tome all right so after kiting this goliath around for a bit we're now going to try to kill it with our sawed off shotgun we have a much lower aiming time than it it takes a while to aim so yeah we should be able to just go back and forth like this and then eventually it should go down and there we go 
And alrighty, Doomguy and Flingabob made it back at pretty much the same time. Doomguy, for some reason, decided to take a nap before leaving. And Flingabob just rushed down here. Dude is completely out of rest and recreation. He's in a terrible mood. And there's a moderate psychic drone here, which is lowering the moods of all our males by quite a bit. We're now immediately going to have Doomguy activate this psychic pacifier as the thrombos are still here. So in the northwest corner, there's a male who's not especially good. He's got low health, low damage, pretty much low everything. This other male, though, has pretty average average health and damage but it has really high speed and so yeah we're gonna tame this one also in case you guys are wondering the female is absolutely terrible I didn't even know health could get that low and then all of her other stats are below 100% as well so yeah we're definitely gonna go for the male here and we're gonna be able to mate it with our female hopefully I've never actually mated it thrombos but I think you can and so yeah here we go psychic animal tamer is it gonna get brain yep it got brain damage it got one damage on its brain and actually thrombo brains are not that tanky the vanilla vikings expand to legendary creatures have like 170 hp on their brains i think but yeah one damage on the brain is not going to matter it's only lowering its effectiveness by one percent so we don't really care about that and i don't think it's gonna keep burning like it is getting some burns on like its leg and stuff but yeah the brain scar did not get any worse and all right we got two thrombos now now we just got to make sure that we can train these guys because they are very wild and we don't really have anyone that's all that good at animals like quakes does have seven i guess and actually we need 10 to be able to even train the thrombo okay so that's gonna be our new goal i guess Okay, we just got another quest to get another legendary animal. We are out of psychic animal tamers though, but we have 23 days to do this quest, so we might get one in that time. In the last series, I actually never tamed a Fenrir. This is a giant wolf, and this thing's pretty beastly. So yeah, we'll just keep an eye out for another psychic animal tamer. And immediately after, we're getting raided by some settlers, I guess. And alrighty then, I guess playthrough's over. So I think normal raids are still based off of wealth, and I could check wealth independence mode. I'm thinking I might do that in the next episode. It's under the storyteller, and down here is wealth independent progress mode. And with this difficulty, raid strength just scales over time. It's not based off of wealth. Okay, you know what? On second thought, screw all that noise. I'm a gamer, and we're going to figure out a way to beat this. So there's some infested ship chunks that I was kind of saving for an emergency. I think this definitely classifies as an emergency. We're going to open these up and some insects are going to spawn out of them. And there we go. We hit the ship chunk and a bunch of insects spawn out of all the four ship chunks. Our base is walled in, so the raiders are going to go for those things first. We're also going to use this mortar that was delivered to us by those mecha droids earlier. And we're going to fire a mortar shot right in the middle of these guys. So Doom Guy doesn't have very high intellectual. And mortar accuracy is based off of shooting and intellectual. So we're going to hope that we can get a good hit here. But... We're not going to be super optimistic about where he hits. Like, right in the middle would be just amazing. Okay, well, that's not where we were going for. I don't know if we're going to have enough time to fire another turret shot. I'm really going to hope that's the case. There's 30 seconds in between each turret shot, and he had to go reload as well. I think it's been at least... Okay, yep, here it comes. Seriously. I'm surprised these raiders are not charging. Okay, yeah, there they go. They're beginning their assault. The raiders are going to go for these insects first, and so we're going to have a bit of time to wind up another mortar shot, although they're not clumped up anymore. Well, like, these guys down here kind of are. Noom guy's actually ready to fire in four seconds. Let's aim, like, right... Maybe, like, right here, because there's not a lot of places that we can miss, I feel. Like, even if we do miss, we can still... Okay, nice. One of our dudes killed one of their dudes. And here comes the mortar... Oh, there, there we go. We killed three people with that mortar shot. Very nice. And a lot of these guys are getting just absolutely obliterated. The question now is, do we have Doomguy come out here and help out Quakes and Wonkas, who are just sniping at these guys? Or do we have them load up another mortar and try our luck with the mortar roulette type of deal? I think we do another mortar, because we could get a lot of hits here. Oh, crap. And I think all the insects are dead. They did not last long. Okay, we're gonna pull back. I don't know what the heck that thing is, but it does not look... Okay, it's an explosive. The mortar's not ready to fire. I think we're gonna have Doomguy just pray for a hit right here. Uh, like, we could hit... Okay, we actually hit one of them. That was kind of lucky, I guess. And alright, here they come. Wonkus and Quakes are not in the best spot. And Nice, they're not shooting at Wonkus or Quakes, which is good. What the heck was that? Well, that dude threw an explosive sack and shredded Wonkus' left arm. It's not completely destroyed, though, which is good. But yeah, we need to take out Gem. That's the girl that's throwing explosives. I don't think the explosive sack is that... Whoa. That's right on our animals. We're going to pull them back up north a bit. Hopefully... Oh, 
Well, the explosive blew up on Bundy, but it did no damage. I don't think it actually hit him because I didn't see the explosive projectile go on our side of the wall. I think it was like on their side of the wall. And yeah, Gem hit herself with that explosive. So that was really good. And we got Doom Guy over here with his sawed off shotgun. We're going to have him just kind of get a bit closer here. And yeah, nice. They hit themselves. Oh, crap. There's two explosives that are going to almost hit Doom Guy. <laughs> It could have been really bad. Okay, we're gonna have our thrombos and our Arkhamut just charge. And like, I'm pretty sure we're almost done with this raid. We're also gonna have Wonkas and Quakes pull out their short range weapons. And yeah, we only have to kill like a couple more, I'm guessing, and it's over. Cause they've already lost so many, yep. They lost so many people. Quakes and Wonkas ended up getting hit at the end there, which is not ideal. And there goes our solar generator. How's our dog? Our dog's actually just owning. And then the Thrumbo has got the flu, but that's all for the Thrumbo. All right, we're going to pull our animals back. No one's going to chase here, I don't think. Oh, and then our Arkhamut ended up finally getting hit at the end there. It's not as tanky as it looks. I think it just got really lucky there because, like, we can see it got hit. Well, it got hit quite a few times. Not that many times by gunshots, although I guess, like, the shield did block a good amount of damage. I don't know. I think we're going to need the Arkhamut if we do keep playing on this difficulty. But, yeah, a lot of people are injured right now. And we're going to have everyone go inside. And we'll Doom Guy tend to everyone's injuries. Oh, and there we go. I finally figured out how to use the textile recycler, which is perfect timing because we're going to have so much extra clothes to recycle. I'm making it so we can only put tainted materials inside of this textile recycler and yeah we're gonna have no shortage of tainted material but yeah we're gonna output cloth from apparel and then extract ingredients and it should just work textile recycler is working it's gonna be ready in two hours well already then it's gonna be a slow process to recycle all this stuff but we will get it done eventually okay so i fell off a little bit did not manage our wealth and we just suffered the consequences of that which actually we didn't really get punished too hard because we did have that infested ship chunk crash to fix our wealth problem we're gonna have most of our colonists leave we're only gonna leave doom guy and hoshi here and we also tried to finally extract that legendary enchant with wonkus's 10 crafting and unfortunately it failed i don't know if this was because wonkus was injured his manipulation was only at 50 percent we probably should have waited for him to heal back up but we were successful at extracting the rare one we loaded up all of our goods and most of our animals on a caravan we only left our arkhamut back at base all that stuff was increasing our wealth by a ton and we're gonna bring all that over to roulette wick and we're gonna hope they still have that power armor we're then going to explore this abandoned broadcasting station. It still has six days left, so we should be able to get up there in time. We'll be doing all that in the next episode. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you then.